Unfortunately, one of my wild caught Nano Blue Tetras has passed away. We're gonna go ahead and take a little closer look at this fish. Don't go anywhere. What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Super sad to have to uh, say that one of my fish is dying, but one of the original wild caught Nano Blue Tetras from Southern Peru uh, is slowly passing away. It's an older fish, it's pretty much just old age as far as I know, but there's definitely something on the side of the fish that looks odd. As soon as this fish passes away, I have no other way to euthanize it. And I don't want to get yelled at for doing anything weird, so I'm just going to let the fish pass away, unfortunately, on its own. There's definitely something weird on one side of the fish, and I'd like to take a little closer look at it under the microscope. So the fish that is passing away is in tank number three of my Nano Blue Tetra breeding program. Uh, this tank right here. Uh, he's down here, uh, or she is down here at the bottom. We will know uh, if this is a male or female once I get it under the microscope for sure. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait until this fish passes so that we can take a little closer look at it. I just want to go ahead and give you a full disclaimer real quick. I am not a veterinarian. I am not a doctor. Uh, I'm not a scientist, a citizen scientist maybe. Uh, I just kind of want to know what's going on with my fish and I want to be able to share it with you guys as well. So I do not have a dissection kit right now, so I had to get a little creative and make my own DIY dissection kit. So I have a sterile surgical blade, I have inoculation loop, as well as some tweezers, a little poker, and some other little hypodermic needles that can be used for uh, just scraping, poking around, and maybe moving specimens to a slide. I have four slides here ready to go. Uh, two of them are indented so that you can put something larger on the dish without it getting smashed by the cover slip. I have two regular microscope slides as well. The best thing that I have here is this adapter that allows me to take the camera that I'm filming with right there, the Sony Alpha A6500, and I can replace the five megapixel digital camera with this adapter. We'll be able to look at everything filming with this camera under the microscope. So let me go ahead and grab the fish and we'll get on this. Alright, so we're looking at this Nano Blue Tetra. This is a Titotrax tamopotensis. This fish does come from southern Peru, Madre de Dios River Basin. Um, freshly deceased. Now this fish, I believe it's one of the original wild caught fish. It really just seemed that this fish was uh, just getting older and weaker and slowing down. I really did not think that this fish had any kind of a parasite. Now you can see here that there is just a little bit of a laceration or an ulcer. This looks to be a little bit more like it was just rubbing itself on the substrate uh, because it could no longer swim properly anymore. This doesn't really seem to be any kind of a parasite or anything like that. I know that this fish is a male for a couple of different reasons and some of them are really interesting. One of the interesting things about this fish is the males have a little bit more of a modified anal fin and that anal fin has barbs on it which scientists or biologists do not know why they have barbs there. Um, I think it has something to do with um, kind of latching themselves on, uh, grabbing the females so that they can uh, inseminate her with their sperm packets. So um, I actually had a problem with this fish getting him out of the net because the anal fin was stuck to the net because of the barbs on it. It's really interesting to see that there's actually barbs coming off of the fish himself, not just uh, barbs on the rays of the anal fins. So this is something that I have not seen before for sure. Another way that you can tell that this is a male, so you can see that the top fin and the bottom fin overlap a little bit right in the middle. It's like they are split and they overlap just a little bit like uh, petals of a flower. And that's one of the best ways to distinguish the males from the females. Another way that you can tell a male from a female is the males have a lot more teeth that extend out of their mouth on their bottom jaw. You can see here that the teeth go all the way out here to the bottom of the jaw. I've evacuated some of the fish's waste onto a slide just so we can take a look and see what was uh, 
what was uh, in his track at the end there and this looks to be some kind of a worm maybe this uh, this long thing right here could be wrong but it looks to be some kind of a worm it does look like there's some kind of a parasite in the feces of this fish uh, there's billions and billions of these little tiny round things kind of reminds me of <clears throat> The cysts of the eggs of roundworm, I'm not sure, but these tanks are going to get medicated now, that's for sure. Just to go through a little bit more preventative uh, quarantine and medication, these fish did come from the wild, so I do expect to find some things in these fish. I have to say it is really awesome to have the opportunity to see this fish up close. Uh, there's things about this fish that I've only been able to read about up until now. Now in regards to the stuff that I found under the microscope that looks like cysts, like maybe roundworm cysts, roundworm eggs, uh, it could very well possibly be uh, the super sperm packets, uh, which I can't pronounce the name of them right now. So this could very well be that. Now I'm just a citizen scientist here. I'm just learning as I go. I'm just trying to uh, learn about these fish so that I can share it with you guys, share it with science. I do want to thank all of you that are already subscribed to me. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share my content. It means so much to me. And uh, remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.